leading ministries today is so much different than it was just two years ago. Uh, the whole world and, and the way that you approach things and even the language that we use has changed and shifted. And I've never been one to really capture my messages from the news or from uh, uh, allowing them to be driven by current events. I don't want my messages to be caught up by newspapers, but from the Word of God that bring you something that's life-giving. However, I told you I had two topics that were working in me, and today's message is going to be current events. That word current events or the phrase current events in the Webster's Dictionary means an important political or social event that are happening in the world. Everybody say it. Say it again. Happening in the world now. How many of you know there is a lot happening in the world right now? And, uh, you know, my style of message that I like to bring 52 weeks a year is life-giving, life-changing, and life-challenging. So I, I want everything to make sure that it has life in it, but we just add the giving, changing, and challenging to it. I always want you to walk out of your challenge. And the truth is I've had to address the topic of current events and culture wars more in the last 24 months than I've had to address it in 35 years. That's the absolute truth. Back in October, for those of you who were here, if you remember, we were in a series titled Living in the Last Days, Signs. And we were talking about the second coming of Christ and the signs and the rapture and what all was tied to that. And uh, when you speak on end times, you have to talk about current events. You can't talk about the last days and not talk about what's happening right now. And because the current events of the times, we see them kind of as a timepiece that God uses to tell us where we are on his calendar. Current events will always point us to biblical prophecy. And biblical prophecy tells us, has that event taken place yet? Or is there something yet to take place before the next click on God's timepiece and calendar comes to pass. So if we look over the last two years, one of the things that has taken place in our current events is COVID-19. A pandemic literally kills millions of people and goes all the way around the globe, and it seems like in just a flash of time. At no time in your lifetime, no matter what age you are in this room, has the planet been talking about the same thing at one time. This is the first time in history that everyone is talking about the exact same thing at the exact same time. Following COVID-19, we saw economic collapse and we saw all sorts of, within the United States, small businesses falling apart and big businesses not coming back. Churches that are no longer their doors are not opened anymore and still small businesses are suffering. How many of you know that we really haven't seen the ec economic impact because we've had a lot of money pumped into our economy trying to prop it up and at some point those toothpicks are going to give way. Something's going to give way. So again, a current event. Social media CEOs deciding what is good speech and what is not good speech. Telling us what we can say and what we can't say. People being canceled and, and being told they cannot be free to speak. And that's one of the pillars of the United States is freedom of speech. Come on, somebody. I shouldn't be able to stand up here, but I can because we have freedom of speech. Another thing that's happening in our world. And then North Korea firing off ballistic missiles. They've started to do that again. And then we have Iran ramping up their nuclear weapons program. And of course, the world's been trying to stop North Korea. They've been trying to stop Iran, but these are all current events and we're starting to see them right now. All these nations are working very rapidly together right now to cause chaos in the earth. And then China, we've already spoken about China. We're so glad that we have a representation of that nation here today, but China is wanting to invade Taiwan. If China invades Taiwan, your lifestyle is going to change because right now, if you looked at the tag on your clothing, it probably says made in Taiwan. 
If you go home and turn over something in your home, it probably says made in Taiwan. I don't know if you know, we have tens of thousands of vehicles right now that are not able to leave the lot that are brand new at the manufacturers, but they don't have the little chip to put in that the computers would be able to fire up the rest of the vehicle. So these cars are not getting to the dealerships. So what happens? The economy begins to have inflation and your used car right now is worth more than you paid for it new. I know somebody had a uh, 2000, I think 2012, 2013 Ford truck, had 30,000 miles on it. He said he paid $36,000 for it. He traded it in. He got $32,000 for it. That's a good trade. But you understand you have to get another car. Come on, somebody. And so now used cars are very expensive because China is putting pressure on Taiwan and it's affecting us at home. I'm trying to show you that every one of these current events affect you directly. Come on, somebody. It's no longer, oh, that doesn't touch me anymore. And then we just happen to have our latest current event, which is Russia which is a very serious incursion into Ukraine. And you can sit here in America and act like it's not going to hurt you. It, we are going to feel the impact of what is happening over there in Ukraine. It's a current event that needs to be talked about. When you talk about Russia, you have to talk about NATO. When we begin to look at NATO, they say the, the last thing NATO just said after this incursion is they announced the first ever activation of its response force to support Ukraine. So the NATO Supreme Allied Commander, who was an Air Force General here in the United States, Todd Walters, he was quoted as saying this, this is a historic moment and the very first time the alliance has has employed these high readiness forces in deterrence and defense role. This is the first time ever that these forces have been called up because we're in the middle of a historic moment. And the church needs to realize not so much where are we on the earth's calendar, but where are we on God's calendar? Because I'm telling you, we are in the middle of a God thing right now. How many of you know we've had some crazy historic events in the last two years? Matter of fact, I'm tired of historic events. How about you? How about no more history for just a little while because it's been overwhelming. And then how many of you were coming into 22 like, woo, we made it. And then you wake up and all of a sudden an incursion in Europe. This is, this is time for the church not to hide out and not to focus on the news but to say, Lord, where are we on your calendar? Because we want to know what the church is supposed to do. Can you say amen? In the mix of all these current events, there are three very important nations that have been in the prophetic, biblical uh, timeline of God for thousands of years, even before they really existed, which is Russia, Iran, and China. Now, we know Iran uh, in the Middle East was, a, was, was Persia, called Persia. And the Bible talks about these nations, and of course, all eyes are on these nations right now. These, this is an alliance that is forming in front of us to bring in the last days and to bring in and usher in the rapture of the church. And this, this invasion into Ukraine is the very beginning, the very tip of some things that we're going to see here. As Christ followers, we're to keep our eyes on one nation in particular. It's not these three nations, and it's not the United States. But the Bible makes it very clear that as a Christ follower, we're to keep our eye on Israel. So let me stop and cool everybody's thinking down for what we're building up in your thoughts right now as to where this message is leading. I'm not here to predict anything, okay? And I think if you knew I was going to talk about this, you'd have stayed home. But let me say something to you. It's important sometimes that we have to stop and say, where are we according to God's calendar? Besides that, it's not my fault I'm preaching this message. That guy went home and prayed yesterday, and this is what the Lord told me. I blame him. I just knew this was the Lord. As a matter of fact, I woke up this morning first thing about 6.50 this morning, and my phone buzzed, and it was somebody in Europe who texted me and said, Pastor, if you, and they were, they were former Summit Church members, they texted me and said, Pastor, if you know any family, a small family that's coming out of Ukraine and they need somewhere to stay, my home is open. I knew right then, I'm glad I'm preaching this message 
Because if I'd have been preaching something else, I'd have been like, and as a matter of fact, I was up till 3.30 this morning putting these notes together because my other notes were done. So I thought they were definitely Jesus because they were already done. This couldn't have been the Lord. But I was up all night putting these together because I just felt this, this constraint that I needed to bring this message today. We can't talk about end time events without talking about Israel. It's the centerpiece of everything on God's calendar that revolves around that centerpiece called Israel. Now, there's a chapter in Matthew, chapter 24, that whenever we talk about end time events, people always go to the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 24. He said, when reports come in of wars and rumored wars, keep your head and don't panic. Look at the person next to you and say, don't panic. Don't get caught up in the news cycles. He said, look, there's going to be wars, there's going to be rumors of wars, but don't panic. So my first point today is the centerpiece. The centerpiece. That word in the Webster's Dictionary, that phrase means something that is of central importance in a larger whole. You put a centerpiece in the middle of your Thanksgiving table. It's what you want everyone to see. But how many of you know it's a part of a larger whole called your Thanksgiving meal? Come on, somebody. Right? Israel is the centerpiece in God's calendar, but the larger whole is the entire world and what he has plans to bring the earth and the people into the kingdom of God. So we're going to look again over in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 32. Jesus said, Take a lesson from the fig tree. From the moment you notice its buds form. Now, I want to show you something that, that Jesus is saying, you know, and there's, there's a certain season where there is no buds on it, just like right now our trees are all bare, right? There's no buds, but I'd say the buds are just now beginning to form on them because it won't be long before we see them. But he said, take a lesson from the fig tree. He is talking about the agricultural fig tree that's in Israel that they had as a staple as one of their foods, okay? But he is also using this as a metaphor for Israel. Whenever you hear a, a prophetic word about the fig tree, it's actually talking about the state or the nation of Israel. He said, take a lesson from the fig tree, the merest hint of green. You know that summer's just around the corner. Jesus said, watch the mist of green because something's happening. We know summer's coming. He said, summer's just around the corner. So it is with you, nation of Israel, when all these things, we just had a whole list of current events we talked about, when you see them, you'll know he's at the door and don't take this lightly. I'm not just saying this for some future generation, but for, everybody read these four words, one, two, three. This age continues until all these things take place. Sky and earth will wear out, but my words won't wear out. How many of you thank God for the word of the living God? If he says it, it's been established. Before there was ever an incursion into Ukraine, before there was ever a Russia, before any of this happened, it was already established in the Word of God what was going to take place. You understand? The current events of today, God knew about them thousands of years ago. Current events are lining up, and the timepiece of God is ushering in the next big thing on God's calendar. Russia is aligning itself. Biblically, we can see this over in the book of Ezekiel, chapters 36, 37, and 38. In chapter uh, 36, God describes prophetically the rise or the rebirth of the nation of Israel that took place in 1948. If you're in here and you're 75 years or older, you can remember a time when there wasn't an Israel. Just 75 years ago, Israel didn't exist. That's recent history. And God prophesied that over in Ezekiel thousands of years ago that there would be a rebirth of that nation. Look at the fig tree. It came back. Then he describes the rise of another nation called Magog and another nation called Persia, which are modern-day Russia and Iran. Now, we could look at these nations and realize that these are nations that are part of the news every single day. Can you say amen to that? 
Yet it was spoken about thousands of years ago. Let's look over here in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, and verse 2. He, he told Ezekiel, set your face towards Gog of the land of Magog. Gog is a person, and they are the ones of the president, the king, or the ruler over Magog. Speak to God for me. Tell him that this is what the Lord says. You will come to attack my people, Israel, while they're living in peace and safety. Again, a current event. When this happens, this tells you where you are on the calendar of God. Are you following me? Yet we know this isn't going to happen yet because Israel's not living in peace and safety yet. They don't have peace and safety within their borders and without. They're under threat all the time. But there's coming a time when they will be living in peace and safety. And Gog, whoever the president is at the time, from Magog up in the north, is going to come down and attack Israel. You will come down from your place out of the far north. So he's telling us right where it's coming from. And you will bring many people with you. You will be a large and powerful army. God is telling us something that's going to take place. This is a calendar event, and we need to watch our current events so we understand the calendar events. Let me show you a, a map real quick. So you see on this map, right down here is this little nation called Israel. This little strip of land, which is a very strategic, important piece of land. And have you ever noticed how much Israel is in the news and how much people want that piece of land? They want that thing so bad. Three religions, Christianity, Judaism, and uh, the Muslim belief, all want to claim the Temple Mount as their place of worship. This place has not only a military value, not only a monetary value, but it has a religious value. You're not going to find that in many lands, especially one that's the size of New Jersey. That's how big this is. Prior to the invasion of Ukraine, Putin annexed Crimea... And when he annexed Crimea, he was the, there was a prophecy years ago that said, when you see Crimea fall, it's the beginning of the end. Now, that person would have never known that Crimea was going to fall. The first thing he did was he annexed Crimea, which is a part of Ukraine. He took a little slice of Ukraine. And now he has threatened, let me go to another map here, he has threatened Finland and Sweden. And the reason he's threatened Finland and Sweden, here's, here's the Russian Federation, this huge landmass, okay? And now he's threatened these two. Over here, you see Ukraine. He's already come into Ukraine. And he's threatening these two nations. I'm going to show you this exact map, but I'm going to show you who the NATO allies are. These are the NATO nations. So we have 30 NATO nations. It doesn't show the United States, which is over here on the map. We are part of that, of course. And these are the nations that have a line to say, if you attack one of us, you attack all of us. Well, the reason they had to have that was because of Russia. Because you can look at how big Russia is compared to the rest of these nations. But you notice Ukraine puts a buffer. And then Finland, so the reason why he has told Finland, he's threatened them because they're not part of NATO. And he told them, hey, so don't you even think about joining NATO. You join NATO, and there's going to be a military response just like in Ukraine, because Ukraine's not part of NATO either. So right now, NATO has not been attacked, so NATO cannot be uh, drawn into this war. It's a mess. But this is bigger than the news, bigger than maps. This is bigger than the things I'm saying to you. You need to understand that Israel down here also has other problems. It has Iran, it has uh, Afghanistan, it has all of these other nations, Libya, all of these nations that are coming. The Bible says that every nation will make war with Israel. Now, if it says every nation, what nation does that include? The United States. Now, I don't know how that works out. I can't predict how that's going to... All I, all I know is there's no way the United States is making war with Israel as long as I'm around. I'm putting a stop to that. See, I'm part of the church, but I don't think the church will be here. Because this is all lining up for the rapture of the church. Come on, somebody. You see, I don't know about you. I read the end of the book. No matter what goes on here, we win. God has us in his hand, and we win. This is all pointing towards the return of Jesus Christ. It's so important. Not only does Israel have that, he said, look to the north. 
And from the north will come a massive army. But you know the rest of that says in Ezekiel? It says when that army hits the mountains of Israel, that God is going to rain down hellfire and brimstone right on top of the armies, that there will be wind and earthquake that will swallow up that army. And he said, so that all eyes will know that I am God. So these biblical events that we read about, splitting of the Red Sea and all these things that we hear in the Bible, God ain't done yet. Come on, somebody. He's going to show up just like he's always shown up so that everybody can see it. But when that happens, I want you to know you and I are already going to be in heaven. Come on. He will have already pulled the church off of the earth. But we need to be aware of the current events that we're in now so we don't get caught up in the news cycle. I don't want you getting caught up in the news cycle and getting lost. I want you to see what the Bible says. Just last April, Israel had 4,000 rockets fired into its sovereign territory. 4,000 rockets. They didn't do anything to provoke that. Can you imagine from Mexico and from from Canada, them firing 2,000 rockets apiece into the United States? How many of you know it would only take three and we'd be like, you're done. First two, we forgave you for. Number three, we are going to crush you. If somebody came to your house and threw a rock at your window and broke it, and you went out there and said, what are you doing? All of a sudden, they threw 4,000 rocks at your house. How many of you would respond? Matter of fact, let's just teletype what you're thinking would happen right across the screen. But yet, Israel's told, constrain yourself. Don't do anything. Don't respond. And they do. Because God is protecting them. But Magog, Russia, and Persia, and China are aligning to try to take this little piece of land. Because whoever controls that controls the world. Because that's God's land. Israel is the size of New Jersey and has about 100,000 people more than New Jersey in population. What are they after? The Temple Mount. Why do they want the Temple Mount? Because three religions are represented there. Christianity, uh, the Muslim religion, and Judaism. So it has, a, it has a religious value. But also in the Golan Heights, there's oil and gas reserves that these nations want. So that has a monetary um, value, but it also has a military value. It's a land bridge. You have to go around them to get from Egypt to Syria. So that, it's a little land bridge that creates this moment where nations want this. And that's exactly what Gog, who's head of Magog, is wanting to do. He's wanting to come down and make alliances, but he's also wanting to come this way and come into Europe. It's Listen, what you're seeing is not going to stop at one nation. This is a nation who wasn't creating war with anyone, yet their borders were breached by a military of almost 100,000 people, and they're killing innocent people. And I just want to bring this to your attention. Our brothers and sisters in Christ live in Ukraine. Come on, somebody. There are video and pictures of pastors leading their churches on Sunday while bombs are going off right outside, and they're leading their congregation. They're our brothers and sisters. How many of you know we have a responsibility to our family? Come on, somebody. We have a responsibility to not bury our heads and and just say, oh, well, that's not here. Oh, yeah, come into a neighborhood near you. Because you're, when your gas prices break $5 a gallon and all of these things that we're used to having start falling apart because the world gets into a, a, a big quagmire, it's going to hit us. But I can tell you, we're not in it for the gas and we're not in it for the money. We're in it for the people and the souls that Jesus wants to save. And if we'll just rise up at the church and just be aware, you don't have to be a, 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 a CNN Fox News person. You just got to know what the word of God says. Know it in, in advance. So the centerpiece, number two, pastor. I didn't come to church to hear about all of this. The media's got it covered. Oh, really? You know what the media's got covered? They've only got covered what they know. How many of you know none of them are saying, well, we read over in the Word of God. When was the last time you heard that on CNN? When was the last time you heard Fox News say, let's just open our Bibles and see what God has to say? The church is where you get your news from. The church and the Bible is where you know what current events are going to affect your life. 
The media doesn't have anything covered. I got news for you. God had it covered thousands of years ago when he already told us what was going to happen. Know what the Bible says and peace will come. So let me refer back to what I said in the beginning, the first question I asked. I've never been one to capture my messages from the news or allow my topics to be driven by current events. That's not me. That's not how I do it. But you know what? However, there are times when current events start lining up with biblical prophecy, and we just need to put a pause on whatever we're talking about, and we need to get educated as the church so we know exactly where we are on God's calendar. Because current events are the timepiece that tell us where we are on God's calendar. Current events tell us, is that a prophetic event or is it a pathetic event? Who knows? But God will show us those prophetic events, and we need to stop at the church and say, wait a minute, where are we? That's all I'm doing today. I felt so constrained to do this. First Corinthians, First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32 says, There were men from the tribe of Issachar who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. And I want Summit Church to be full of men and women who understand the times, not from CNN or Fox News, but from the Word of God, so that you'll know what to do. How many of you want to know what you ought to do right now? Well, the Bible says you can have a spirit of wisdom to come upon you and within you, the Spirit of God that'll show you how you're supposed to react to the times that you're in. Because social media and the news, and the radio, and all of these things will drive an agenda, but it's not God's agenda. And we have to know when we leave here today, look, things are happening, but Jesus said, don't panic. There's going to be things that are going to happen, and you have to know that this is the beginning. You know what I see? I see the mist of green. Come on, somebody. Something's getting ready to take place. On question number two, Yes, the news is covering it, but they only cover as it happens. They only know as it happens in real time. There are certain events that have been already foretold and for the believer to know about. And you know what God did for us as believers? He gives it to us history in advance. Before it ever happens, he's told us it's going to happen. Believers get to know history in advance. And the only history that God has given us in advance is the only history that matters. Whatever isn't mentioned in the Bible doesn't affect you. But if it's mentioned in the Bible, you need to know where you are on God's calendar. Are you following me today? Come on. Are you getting anything out of this? Come on, help me out. Are you getting it? Good. I'm glad you're getting something out of this. I'm usually not the professor, but today I am. I should have wore a bow tie. What is one on earth? This is to clue us in on God's calendar of events. Watching the, listen, watching the timepiece of current events tells us where we are on the calendar of God's events. And anything in between that's not on God's calendar, ah, just let it go. But man, when it starts lining up, when you see Gog and Magog, rising up, when you start seeing nations aligning, when you start seeing chaos all over the globe and you literally can't keep up with the news. How many of you know you can't keep up with the news? You cannot. But our job is to make sure we pray for our brothers and sisters. Our job is to be aware. Summit's message will always be about Jesus and his sacrifice for us. It will always be about win the lost at any cost. But there are times that we have to stop. Listen, we're going to grow the believer up. We're always going to have messages that challenge you and encourage you. We want you to be a knowledgeable warrior when you walk out of here. And that's what I'm trying to do today. Messages will always be based on Scripture. They're not going to be based on current events. This is not based on current events. Current events is pointing us to Scripture. I don't want it to be about culture wars. But if the culture war is in the scriptures, I want you to see that this was already in the scripture. God foretold it, and you ought to be excited that he's already told you in advance. How many of you would love to know how much money you're going to have in the bank next year? Right? But you don't. That was like a depressing moment all of a sudden. It was like, <laughs> it was like well, I don't know. God's for you. He's not against you. Come on, somebody. I said God's for you. He's not against you. 
God, look, God made it clear in the scripture there were some things he wanted us to know. He wanted us to pause at certain times in history. Why? So we would be like the children of Issachar. We would know what we ought to do. A spirit of wisdom. So number one, Israel's the centerpiece. Number two, media has it covered. Not. Number three, brings clarity to confusion. You see, the Word of God will always bring clarity to confusion. In his last two letters to the Thessalonians, Paul was addressing end-time events because the Thessalonians were so fearful and confused about the times they were living in. And so Paul was trying to settle with them. Look, some of these events that people are telling you have already taken place have not taken place. They thought the return of Jesus had already happened, and they missed it. They were concerned about some things, and Paul was trying to address those things. He was bringing clarity to their confusion about the very things that we're talking about and we're seeing today. As a matter of fact, he wants the believer to have clarity, confidence, and hope. Anytime something happens that turns the world upside down, we shouldn't get in fear and get in confusion and be a person who has no hope. No, we should be a person with clarity, confidence, and hope even in the midst of the mess. Watching, have you seen any of these videos of these Ukrainians? They're, they're, they're in subways and they're out in parks and they're in their churches and they're worshiping right in the middle of war. You know what they're singing? Waymaker, miracle worker. And here we are in America, safe and sound. And it's not a matter of us getting on an airplane and getting over there to make a difference. But dear God, if we have clarity and we have confidence and hope, we can make a difference right where we are through praying for them and believing God to work. Because this is the calendar of God. And how do you know he has his eye on the church in that nation? Those people that are serving him. Over in 2 Thessalonians, Paul said this. He said, do not be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed either by spirit or spoken word. Be strong in the midst of all of this. May Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and gave us good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work, and I love this, and every good word. God wants to bring good work and good word. Listen, God's word doesn't change because God, Magog is trying to take over nations. God's word doesn't change. That means those men and women and young people that love God and given their hearts to Jesus Christ, this is still going to work for them. I'm believing for angels to surround our people there and do miracles for them that we would hear, look what the Lord has done even in the midst of the mess. I saw some video, man, where some this car got run over by a tank. Did anybody see that? And the guy lived. An old man got crushed by a tank just because he was driving down the road. And here comes a a Russian Magog tank and just ran him over for no reason and flattened that car. And they took the roof off. He's like, hey, what's up, man? Down here praying. Waymaker, miracle worker. You know, what's up? It was a crazy thing. There's no way he should have survived. But how do you know we should hear story? Come on. Story after story after story. Look what God has done. A massive army is going to come from the north and try to invade Israel. There's no way they could fight them off, but God's going to send hellfire and brimstone and earthquakes and wind, and all of the world will be watching like, what just happened? And he said, I will prove that I am God. Oh, you serve a mighty God. You serve a powerful God. You serve an awesome God. You serve a forgiving God. You serve a loving God. He's alive and well. Even right now, he's seated upon the throne, and his name is high, and it's lifted up. Mm. Sorry, I'm getting to preaching. Got to put my bow tie back on. (laughs) So let me just wrap this up by saying, Ultimately, the Antichrist is going to come on the scene. And all of this is setting that up. And it says over here in Thessalonians, the man of lawlessness will be revealed the son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes the seat in the temple of God. Where's the temple of God? Jerusalem. Do you see 
the prophetic saying that nations are going to take over this place to the place that someone is going to rise up and go sit where Jesus Christ is going to sit, proclaiming himself to be God. This is going to happen. Just like right now, Magog is invading a nation that was peaceful, but has decided we want it. And don't think that that's where he's going to stop. And this is why that general has alerted this military force. Didn't he say this is a historic moment? It's the first time ever this amazing force has been, been made alert that they can move at any moment, whether it be land, air, or sea, whatever it is. They are ready to move at any second. Why? Because it's history in the making. The church doesn't have to look at it through the lens of what they see. We have to look at it through the lens of what God said. And when we have that, we can, we can say, I trust you, Lord. Russia's current events are not the big move, but this is a prequel to the rise of bigger problems in the world. This quote by Dr. Roger Barrier, he said, God has not chosen to give us all the details regarding the end times. You see, we don't know everything, but what he has given us gives us hope, shows us the way. So number one, the centerpiece is Israel. Number two, the media has it covered. I don't think so. God does. Bringing clarity, number three, bringing clarity to confusion. And then my last point, real quickly. So what are we supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Pray for the pastors and the Christians in harm's way. Actually pray for them. You realize that we've had three services today. If everybody who came through this building got on their knees and prayed for Ukraine, you realize God will hear from heaven. And he'll send his mighty warrior angels. I don't know what I can do about the government, and I don't know what I can do about the people that don't know Jesus, but I know what I can do for those who are my brothers and my sisters in Christ. Pray that God will show himself in ways that only he can show himself through supernatural protection through supernatural provision so that they know the kingdom purpose for their lives right now. It's so important that they understand that in the middle of a mess, God can still protect them. I heard about a pastor there that uh, a friend of mine who knows a pastor there that the church was so concerned about his safety, they said, you have to get out of the city. And he left with three children, two of them little, and his wife, and they traveled for 48 hours. About 30 of that was walking to get to a safe nation. He's there now in that safe nation. We are working right now with churches on the ground there. We're connecting with churches on the ground there. And I'm going to ask you when you leave here to get out your little uh, digital device and go over to our give button and give and put on their Ukraine so that we can make a difference and help people get out of Ukraine or protect them or bring provision to them. We have pastors on the ground. We will give that money directly to them. And then the church will be empowered in the midst of a mess from this place, your dollar bill is going directly to Ukraine into the hand of another believer, not through some UNICEF or all of those, but to a believer. If we were the ones in trouble and I came and said to you, there's a, there's a church in Texas that just sent us a big offering and we're going to be able to make it because of them, how many of you would be thankful for that church? And that's who we can be. Just do our part. We don't have to do it all, but we can do our part. I don't know what all's in store, but God does. And so we're going to trust him. We're going to believe him to do it. Over in 1 Timothy, let me close with this. It says, pray much for others. Plead for God's mercy upon them. Give thanks for all he's going to do for them. Jesus. Jesus. Would you close your eyes for a second? Lord, we right now, we pray. We pray for every person that the, the mercy of God would be upon them. We give thanks for all you're going to do for them. Because according to your word, you said that you would do that. 
thank you, Father, for those people that are called our brothers and our sisters. We don't know them, but one day we're all going to live together in eternity. And we want them to know that there was a chronicle of time in history that we stopped and we prayed that they would be safe and that a miracle would happen for them. Look at the rest of this scripture. Pray this way for all who are in authority over us and that are in places of responsibility so that we can live in peace and quietness, spending our time in godly living and thinking much about the Lord. We have an opportunity, church. This is our moment. Let's not get caught up in all that's going on in the news. Let's say, Lord, where are we? We see the current events are the timepiece that are showing us what the calendar of God looks like. This is where we are on the calendar of God. Lord, I want to do my part. Can you say amen? Amen. Would you stand up with me? I know this has been a lot different today. Did you get anything out of this message today? I'm so glad. It was awesome to have you with us on Summit TV today. We want to say thank you for using your financial resources to sow into this ministry and all that we do to make a difference for Christ outside these four walls. If you'd like to give to Summit Church, click the Give link in the description box. See you next time.